Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video, I'm going to show you how to heat set ink. I'm going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks, and I'm going to show you some of the different kind of things that you can use ink on, so it should be really good. I've had a ton of questions lately about ink versus chalk paste, how do you set ink, um, and so forth. So let's just jump right in as you are hopping on, say hello to me. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. Okay, yesterday we made this adorable tea towel and this adorable tea towel uh, using stencils from magnoliadiy.com and then using ink. Okay, from magnoliadiy.com. Uh, it's The application process is pretty similar to using chalk paste, people tell me all the time that they're intimidated or that it's, they feel like it's going to be so much more difficult. And it's, it's basically the same thing. Don't use too much ink. Don't go over and over and over and over and over and over. That's it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to heat set and then I'm going to just kind of give you some ideas. So this is what a pot of black ink looks like. And this is what a pot of white ink looks like. They last a really long time and they're a great investment if you like to make t-shirts, tea towels, tote bags, pillows, baby onesies, anything that you would want to be able to wash, to clean. Okay, so let's start with this one. I applied my ink yesterday. So it's 100% dry. You want to make sure that it's fully dry. And that usually takes anywhere from two to four hours. I don't know, know specifically. But make sure it's solidly dry. And um, I'm, I don't have my iron turned on, so no worries. I'm just going to show you the process because I have already heat set these. Okay, you want to put your iron on cotton. Or, or in that vicinity of the cotton setting, no steam. And I use parchment paper in between my ink and my iron just to protect my iron. And you are going to do kind of a circular motion. You don't press down hard. There's no steam. It's on cotton. Doing something like this for three or four minutes. And then you're going to flip your project over and do the same thing. Or if it's a t-shirt, or I don't usually do it with pillows, but with a t-shirt um, or a tote bag, you could do this. Three or four minutes, okay? Then it's fully heat set. And this puppy can be washed in the washing machine with towels. No, no special care needed for it. It can be put in the dryer, and it can do that over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And this t-shirt that I have on, I have washed three times already, and it's still A-OK. -okay. So that is the process of heat setting. And how I visualize it is the heat setting is basically melting the ink substance, whatever it is, we'll look at some colors in just a second, into the pores of the fabric. So it's becoming one with the fabric. And um, you can get cute tea towels, t-shirt blanks, all, um, fun tote bags, pillows, all over the place, including from magnoliadiy.com. Okay, so these are some of the colors, just some. They have a huge variety. There's a yellow, there's a blue, and I'm going to set this one aside because I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Kind of a mint color, emerald green, magnolia green. I love this green. This is called sangria. This is called glittering red. There's a ruby red. This is tiger orange. This is gold. There's... um glittering gold, there's black gold, there's, whoops, hang on, let me set this over here. 
There are oodles of colors, but if you're just starting, here's what I recommend. Do um, black and white. Unless you want to do a bunch of patriotic projects this summer, then get, get the berry blue and the ruby red. But black and white are the most versatile. Okay, so I told you I was going to talk about this. Uh, I just got a question yesterday about this very subject. Do you guys remember when I made this tote bag? I made it last summer to be used to carry my Bible and my notebook and my homework book and pens and junk to my Bible study each week. And I used it all year long, okay? So there's a couple things you can do with ink. You can use ink to stencil, but you can also turn ink basically into a type of paint. Okay, it's not paint, and I'll tell you why you don't want to use paint. But it's ink. You just water it down, and for this project, I watered it down and did the bottom, then I added some more water, did the middle, then I added even more water and did the top, and I got this beautiful ombre effect. Then I used, after it was fully dry, I heat set it before I went on to the next layer. And, um, you know, just like I showed you, it didn't have the stencil on it yet. And then I used white ink to do that stencil. And I think it turned out lovely. Okay, here's why you don't want to use paint. Let's see, I have some hanging out right here. I am going to use this paint later today. This is Waverly Paint Ocean is the color. Um, it is from Walmart. Okay, here's why you don't want to use paint on fabric. Number one, suppose I painted this whole thing with different, um, with paint that I kind of diluted more and more as I was going up. It would dry stiff and crunchy. That is how paint dries on fabric. Very crunchy. And you're going to feel like if your fabric bends, it's almost going to break the paint layer. Um, there's no way to heat set paint, okay? The other thing is, for the beautiful design, you don't ever want to use paint on a stencil. Doesn't matter whether it's chalk paint, acrylic paint, craft paint, latex paint, milk paint, or any other kind of paint. Paint is paint is paint is paint. And it's the quickest way to ruin your stencils because it dries really quick, really quick. And it will clog up the holes in your mesh stencils. So you'll only be able to use them a couple of times versus me, which I maybe use mine a little bit too long, but maybe 30, 40, 50 times, okay? So no paint to paint fabric and no paint on stencils. Um, I did want to say that. And this bag, because I used ink, it is, it's soft. Um, it's heat set. I, I may throw it in the washing machine before my Bible study starts again next year. I still have my name tag. Oh. Heidi Scott, Community Bible Study. And I still have my contact list in here. Um, and it would, it would wash and dry just fine. Paint is not going to do that. Okay, so other projects that you can use um, ink for are something like this. Oh, and by the way, this awesome tote bag, which is so soft and so nice, it came from MagnoliaDIY.com. They sell these tote bags, and they're great. Super great. I love it. It's really nice and soft. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can make all kinds of pillows. And oh my word, I have made so many pillows over the last three years. Um, I joined Magnolia as a creator on April 15th, 2020. So I've been, with, been representing that company for three years. I've been using their ink for three years. I have made so many pillow covers. This one, it was a wreath pattern that I made two falls ago. And of course I added my beautiful vintage mother of pearl buttons on it. But this is, this is gold ink and this is silver ink. And this is a magnolia pillow, which these are so nice. I just swap out the insert. You know, I have three or four inserts 
and I have oodles of pillows. This would wash also. This one probably not so much with the, the buttons glued on it, but otherwise it would totally wash and you would heat set it just the same before you put your buttons on if you wanted to do buttons. Okay, now let's talk about t-shirts. That's the other kind of project that I have done oodly boodly boodles of. Tons. I was looking upstairs in my closet. I have at least 10 t-shirts, short and long sleeve, that I have made using Magnolia ink. This is one of my favorites and also most recent. It says, Peace, Love, Jesus. I get my t-shirts most of the time at Hobby Lobby. This is a fitted one from Hobby Lobby, extra large. This is a not fitted one from Hobby Lobby, extra large, and they have a bunch of different colors. So I stenciled the front, then when it was fully dry, you know, I did my heat setting thing. If you missed the beginning of this video, come back and, and watch or listen to it. And then I also have been doing some really fun things with the sleeves. So I used a stencil to do a design on the outside of these sleeves and then it looks super cute to roll up a cuff and have something like that. Um, for the sleeves, you need to do the front, let it dry, heat set it, then do the back, let it dry, and heat set it. Uh, but what I, why I wanted to show you this is because I just washed this. I also washed my purple one that I had on yesterday that says made to worship. Um, so if I had used paint, it would be crunchy. I don't think it would wash very well or press very well if you needed to iron it. Um, the sleeves would be scratchy and uncomfortable. So that is what you need to know about ink. Let me see, is there anything else I want to tell you? Um, I guess really I just want to tell you that <clears throat> you can get as creative as you want. Um, you can wash and dry it. So if, uh, if you're going to do a project like a t-shirt, a tea towel, a tote bag, a pillow, something that could get wet or that would be handled a lot, tea towels especially, or that you would want to wash, you must use ink. There's no way to use chalk paste. There's no way to make it permanent so it will be washable. You can use chalk paste if you're making something like this. Uh, I think I used ink though, but you could use chalk paste on a little stuffy for a dough bowl because number one, this isn't going to get handled a lot. Number two, I'm never going to want to put it in the washing machine. So you could get away with it there, but chalk paste just will not work on these other things that we've been talking about. Anyways, I hope that I have answered all of your burning questions. Yes, this is parchment paper right here. Not wax paper. It's parchment paper. And you guys, have you seen this? <laughs> Whenever I see it at um, Dollar Tree, I grab a bunch of it. This is 25 sheets of parchment paper that's pre-cut. And I do reuse them. Like, I'll have the same one that I'm heat setting with for a month or so. Um, not wax paper, because wax paper would melt. Uh, so that's a great question. Anyways, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you would like a link to look at inks or to look at stencils or to look at pillows or tote bags, just let me know in the comments and I will get that for you pronto so you don't have to go dig it out yourself. Um, I will be live again in a little while. Um, what do I put in between the layers? Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. That is such a big question. Stay with me. Okay, so when you are um, stenciling a tea towel, let's start with that. You want to open it fully. You don't want to stencil it while it's folded because the ink will go through from one side to the other. And then I usually put either paper towels or parchment paper on the bottom to protect whatever I'm doing it on. So if I'm doing it on my desk, I'll do that, okay? When you're working on something like a t-shirt, 
I will just put a piece of paper towel, a couple layers of paper towel in here because t-shirt fabric is thinner and your ink is more likely to go through to the other side. And I don't want peace, love, Jesus backwards on the back of this t-shirt. Um, so paper towels, or you could use one of the um, inking mats that Magnolia has, or you could use a uh, cardboard. Let's see if I have one. I don't, uh, but there are some cardboard t-shirt forms that you can get at Hobby Lobby or you could use parchment paper. So you definitely want to do that because it will go through on something like this from the front to the back. And when I did my sleeves, I did the same thing. I put uh, paper towels in between the layers when I did the front, then I heat set it, then I did the back and I put paper towels in. Thank you so much for asking um, that question and reminding me, I was thinking about this this morning and trying to remember everything I wanted to say. Can you use ink to paint a stuffy? Sure. You can use it like I did with this, where you water it down and you kind of use it like you would paint. You can also stencil. And I can't remember for sure, because I do so much crafting. If I used I think I used ink to make these little dough bowl stuffies. You can use ink to make a big stuffy like a door hanger, like this. That's It's not going to get wet, and I'm never going to wash it. But you know what? I live in Georgia, and it's super humid. The, the air is wet. <laughs> and this is going to go outside on my front porch over the summer. These are lemons, in case you're wondering, what is that? Um, so I used paint, like this, to paint the canvas. Then I used a stencil, and I used ink. And um, then I heat set it. What do you do when your stencils aren't sticking anymore to your shirt? If you just press them down and put a little blob of ink on the corners, and hold it down, as soon as you start dragging the ink through the pores in the stencil, it kind of acts like a cement <laughs> to attach it to the stencil so it doesn't scooch around. But that just does happen. And um, I'm still using some of my stencils that have absolutely zero stick left on them. I've heard people talk about this adhesive spray. I have never tried it. My feeling is that I want to use my stencils 30, 40, or 50 times until they have no stick whatsoever. And one of those spray adhesives, I'm afraid, is going to clog up the mesh, which is where the design is. Let's see, did I have any other good questions? Those were both excellent questions. Thank you so much for asking. Oh, and let me tell you about this. See all these little doodly doos? Those are ink also. And they're part of my chalk and ink pin pack. The ink in this set has a black body. So when I use this, I could use this on a t-shirt, a tote bag, a tea towel, a pillow to draw a design. It's not meant for over the top of a stencil. But um, if I heat set it, this is going to be washable just the same as this because these are both ink. But um, in Magnolia, they gave the caps, they made the caps white for ink. For some reason, when they were doing their pens, they did the inks with a black body. I don't know why, um, but that's just how it is. So you would want to use ink. All right, well, I have projects to work on for a craft later, so I hope you'll come back. If you're watching on replay, I still hope you'll come back. Do it this, or this. Say something to me in the comments. Make sure you've liked and followed this page. Sprinkle, sprinkle, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Chris Kennedy says it makes her want to try. Chris, you should try. It is not hard, I swear. 
it is really no different from using chalk paste on a stencil. Both, in both cases, you just want to make sure that you don't use too much and that you don't go over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over the same area because that just pushes your medium through the holes in the stencil and around it. Okie dokie, I'll see you guys later.